getting better at this, she says, as I probably don't even have my microphone on. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, that's close. That's really, really close. Okay. <laughs> of my five minute faces series. This is something that I teased in my last video. You guys seemed really excited about it. I have a feeling I'm not the only one short on time. So today it's going to be featuring mostly products from Glossier. And the way that I thought about doing it was five minute face like, okay, my husband walks in and he's like, hey, I'm gonna take the dog to the beer garden near our house. Do you wanna come? And I'm like, yes, give me five minutes, you know? And this is the five minute face that I will like throw on just to feel like a more put together human, you know, just like evening my skin out. But if I've got eight minutes, <laughs> I will add a few finishing touches as well. So for those of us who have a little bit more flexible time and for those of us who have absolutely no time, this is hopefully going to satisfy both. So without further ado guys, I'm going to move you in and we can get started. Oh yes, hi, hello. It's out of me. We got big hair today. I am here for it. So I don't want to mislead anybody and think this is going to be a challenge. Like this isn't going to be where I set a timer and I'm completely silent and we test to see if this takes five minutes. I've already tested it and I'm going to go through as well, like take it or leave it options. Like for example, you know, do you need to put on the Glossier skin tint? Not necessarily. You might have really even skin or you might already really like the way that like your SPF looks on your face or something like that if it's got more blurring ingredients. But this does have, if I'm not mistaken, a little tiny bit of dimethicone in it. And so more than anything, it's not necessarily adding pigmentation to my skin or pigment to my skin. It's adding like a smoother finish. One of the things that I think actually really, really helps in getting your makeup on fast is having tools available. I think that when we think about no powder looks or all cream or whatever, we think fingers and fingers is a really, really fast way, a really fast way. It's a really easy way to get bogged down. <laughs> like it's an easy way to make your makeup take twice as long. At least for me, I just don't have time for the tedium. And so I have a few brushes that I really like to use, especially for like blush and stuff like that. Why am I out of focus? Okay. Was I out of focus that whole time? So anyway, I have two shades actually of the stretch concealer and I have G10 and G11. I honestly think G12 would be even better for me, but these are the ones that they sent me in PR. And this is the brush that I like to use. So this is the Eco Tools. Uh, the label has rubbed off. I don't think they make this bamboo handle anymore, not the specific one, but I will link the newer version of it below. And I just dibbity dab that in there. If you're unfamiliar with the Glossier stretch concealer, it is one of the coolest concealers ever because it really spreads out to look like skin. Like it really, really does. And I actually find that what I like to do is like spread it out really, really thinly. You know, you can build it, but I find that especially on my eyes and stuff like that, if you do, it doesn't really provide that much more coverage and you end up with creasing, or at least I do. And so I just use it on a brush and look how much faster that is than putting it on with your fingers. I, uh, I broke out a little bit from that wear test that I did last week and this guy's just healing up, but you can see it's not even so much like a full coverage thing. It's just about camouflaging. And if for some reason you want to add in like a color corrector or something like that, the, like the Becca color corrector, I find that I end up using less concealer when I do that. So it's almost like not even an extra step. Okay, next step is cheeks. And I think that when you're talking about a five minute face, you kind of have to concentrate on one part of your face. Everything's gonna get covered, but you know, what do you really wanna like spend most of your time on? And for me, it's cheeks because I'm just like a skin, skin, skin person. Trying to make the illusion that my eyes are bigger or something like that is really time consuming. <laughs> and so this is not time consuming and has a really, really great visual impact. So I'm gonna actually take my my wouter here and I'm just gonna use the lid, you know, as a, a mixing palette for my cloud paint because when you're using cloud paint, which I'm using Storm and Beam, when you mix them together, they make the most unbelievably beautiful rose color. When you mix them together, you wanna go ahead and have some left over because you're gonna wanna apply twice because it's just one of those products that your face is gonna eat, okay? So I'd like to mix it with my fingers, 
look at that rose color. It's unbelievable. And just dibbity dab that on my cheeks. And I will take the bronzer brush from Thrive. Why do I have something stuck to my face? And a little goes such a long way with cloud paint. Like be careful. That's the other reason I don't put this on with my fingers is because I always put on too much with my fingers. And then I end up having to like, I don't know, like put so much more concealer on, just trying to even it back out. But trust and believe the first coat will go a little bit more translucent as it wears on your face for a few minutes. So look at that. Just the tiniest bit, dab it out with this brush or any brush. And it's gonna be a lot better than trying to like buff it in with your fingers and get the perfect coverage level and stuff like that. But I'm still keeping some of this and it's not gonna really like dry down in any like, you know, crazy fast fashion, fast fashion. Anyway, um, it's not gonna dry down really quickly. Boom, like look at that. We got complexion. We've got my freckles. The whole thing with, at least for me, a five minute face is embracing what my skin is already doing. I did a whole video a really long time ago back when I had really bad acne. <laughs> if you guys have not been following me for very long, you might not know I used to have really, really bad skin, but I've been a Glossier rep for a really long time and they found me when I did have really bad skin. And it was the first experience that I had where I was like, oh, if I embrace the natural redness in my skin, enhance it with a little bit of blush, I don't have to put on as much concealer to camouflage all these blemishes. And so I did a video called Get the Glossier Glow with Problem Skin or something like that. And I mean, so many people were so grateful for it because it was like the whole messaging, around, this was years ago, the whole messaging around acne was that you had to have this like 25 step strategy for completely covering your face up and starting over from scratch. And it just isn't the case. You know, you can just kind of like start, even though I don't have acne, I still have a lot of pigmentation and stuff like that. And so for me, it's just playing into that a little bit instead of trying to just wash it away first and foremost. So I, could go out of the house just like this. <laughs> like I could just be done. That's not the five minute face, but I could just be done. We're gonna go actually in with the sky wash because it's so fast and it's so good at setting down the surface of your eyes so that mascara and stuff like that aren't going to bleed or aren't going to like run. Because what we have on our, what we have, what I have on my skin right now is not necessarily a, like a dried down situation. It's not going to dry down to like matte or something. And a lot of times that means that it will make certain mascaras kind of resolve on your skin the same way like an oil cleanser or something would. And so you wanna make sure that you have something pretty budge proof. And I don't know what they do with the sky wash formula and also with the, what's it called? Um, Lid star formula but they dry down like completely and they, they're really, really great bases and like they're totally budge proof once you get them on. I've made so many little scratchy marks right there because I'm trying to get like a cat hair, like an imperceptibly small cat hair off of there. And then I'm, oh, by the way, that was Pebble. This is Echo. These are my like absolute two favorites. I think that this actually goes on better. Like you can do Pebble. Pebble's really, really close to my own personal skin tone. Um, and that's why I can do it with my fingers. But Echo, I like to do with a brush. And again, much like the cloud paint, you really don't need much. So I will just use, oh, I got it, oh my gosh. I'll just use like a fluffy brush from Thrive or anybody. I <laughs> opened my eyes and it's stamped onto my eyelid. And this is just going to spread out really nicely, kind of in a halo effect that you can't even really, I don't know, it's not reading as eyeshadow. You know, it reads as, shadow, <laughs> like natural shadow. And like I said, you know, trying to kind of embrace what your skin's already doing. It's like, if you can sort of like make your bedroom eyes look cute and intentional, that's kind of the shortest distance between two places, you know? <laughs> now, I am not until I get to like finishing touches, eight minute face territory, going to add like sparkles and glow. This is get your buns out the door. So the next thing is brows, at least for me. I know that like for a lot of people, brows are the thing that take them the longest and gosh, there are a lot of really cool tools out there that can make them really fast. Like the ones that like draw them in really quickly or like powders and things like that. 
For me, I just go in with the Boy Brown Mousse and y'all know this is like my mainstay anyway. But one of the things that I find helps if I'm not gonna pencil them in is actually be like a little more aggressive in getting every single hair. Cause like I'll go ahead and draw in a lot of times the little front hairs. You know, I think, I think that the pencil spreads out in a way that I don't really have to give that that much attention a lot of times. But for me, I have a lot of little tiny, you know, feathery hairs that are actually right there that are hard to see until I put something like mousse on them. And then I'm like, oh, hi there. I actually don't have to do as much work as I thought. So this is the brown and I'll use blonde if I have penciled my brows in or if it's like a much paler uh, look on my skin. But when I want that nice, like, I don't know, I want something kind of earthy, then uh, I think that like a big brown brow is right at home on my face, like that. Okay, we have reached the point where my face has eaten the cloud paint. So we're going to take the brush again and probably the fact that this has dried down a touch is actually gonna help us. I'm gonna dab that off on my hand because we are just applying it, applying it, applying it right to the front, you know, the local color area of my face. And what I like to do, if you're new here, this is like my personal favorite way of wearing blush is actually to make it look like I just took a lap, right? And that means that it's gonna kind of blend down here. We're not contouring, we're not, you know, doing any kind of strategic shadow and light or anything like that. And so you just kind of wanna make it look like the way that your skin might naturally look with a flush. And you can see, because we didn't add a lot of like complexion pigment uh, to my skin yet, there is like, you know, kind of an overall rosy tone to my whole face. And that is why I go in at the end and just kind of bring the light back in with the concealer again, because it's another one. Like it, Glossier is just, it's so emollient. If it leans any direction, it leans in the direction of going translucent. And so if you want to build it, you kind of have to apply it twice. <laughs> That's just my personal experience with it. But you know, I like to kind of like put that, you know, on my eyes and everything, a little dab on my nose, touch G11 one more time. And I think right there is the most important part to brightening my face at least, obviously like observe the geometry of your own face, but just right there makes me look so much more awake. And then my, my Milaz mustache, I feel like that's just a big one. And also keeping it out of your eyebrows. That's the other thing is like keeping the, the cloud paint out of your eyebrows because that's what's gonna make your whole face look pink kind of thing. And you don't have to do the second coat of blush. That's just me, I like wearing blush. So I personally can do lip liner in three seconds flat. Like it doesn't bother me at all. And I feel like lip liner takes so much less time than eyeliner and I would much rather like use that time wisely. So this is my Thrive lip liner. They don't have, I don't know if they have lip liners in Glossier. I don't know, maybe they do. You know, could I use the Generation G? Absolutely, but this is my personal favorite is to just do the Glossier lip gloss with a lip liner. You could also just do a lip balm if you wanted to and you know, throw it in your purse, take a step out, you know, just do it in the car, something you don't have to have a mirror for. And then, you know, a little mascara. Like, could I use the, uh, what's it called? The Lash Slick? Yes, it's just not my favorite, you know? So I'll use the Thrive, but I think the fastest way and the most like imp impactful way to apply mascara if you're in a hurry is to get really close to your lash line and make sure that that's where like most of the product is going and then only put it on like the outer half of your lashes. It's gonna give that fluttery effect without feeling like you need to like dress your eyes up to like come to the level of your mascara because all of a sudden your lashes are like overwhelming your face. Although that doesn't sound so bad. But um, I do feel like, you know, the spider lashes thing kind of flies in the face of a really dewy five minute face. I watched um, Leanne try like five kind of fan favorite mascaras and she did try the Thrive and she did not like it because it does not do a very good job of holding curl. So if you are someone who needs help holding curl, A, watch her videos, she does a great job, but B, um, the, the lash look is actually better. It's a lot lighter weight for that kind of thing. It's not gonna build as much volume, but it's also not as heavy. I timed this. I can do this in five minutes. This is really, really not a big deal to me. If you wanna skip the eye look, skip the eye look. It's not a big deal. Like obviously it didn't add that much to the look, but if I have eight minutes, <laughs> if I've got eight minutes to really bring it together, 
the things that I consider finishing touches that are worth the investment are usually eyeliner and, oh, that's good khaki. Oh, and of course you touched it while it was wet. Brilliant. Amateur hour. Anyway, uh, <laughs> eyeliner, the way that I do it with like a powder and also a uh, shimmer of any kind, just highlighting. Now, granted, we have a lot of dew going on here. And so if I'm gonna do the dew, then I wanna go ahead and just add a light dusting of powder. The powder is absolutely incredible. They expanded the shade range a little while ago because when I first had it, um, the lightest shade was too dark for me. And so this is actually much better for me. I have it in now G11 to G12. And it is literally made to work with these products. And so it's going to slightly mattify, keep things from moving around, keep things from necessarily like getting super sweaty right away or something like that if you're more prone to that, but it won't take any of the like pigment out of your overall look, you know? And some of you guys were commenting in my last video, you're like, your skin looks like glass. This stuff is really, really cool, okay? This in combination with a little bit of shimmer makes all the difference in the world in terms of just like making your skin look just supernatural. <laughs> okay, the next thing that I'm gonna go in with is like my new Fabi Fave. Honestly, the two of these are like neck and neck because they are slightly different, but they're like, they're in the same family, they're cousins. So this is the white gold illuminator from Root Pretty that they just sent me and I really enjoy it. And then this is the Aether Beauty Pure Diamond Dust Highlighter. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use both <laughs> because I love them both. And you don't have to use either of these or, uh, or both of these. Wow, that was a lot khaki, way to go, way to go. But yeah, comes out like that. It's so gorgeous. Everything from Root Pretty and Aether uh, is sourced so responsibly and so transparently. So they are a couple of the brands that I I'm always excited to feature because Root Pretty, I don't know, I, I want to do a, a, like a 10 minute phase, a five minute phase of Root Pretty at some point, but I really need to like try more of their products because the first, I don't know, I just did a really poor job of like choosing the ones that I picked in the first, like the first round. People who had a lot of experience with the line like commented immediately on my video and they were like, you kind of picked the wrong stuff. And I was like, all right, okay. Like I'm definitely willing to give them a shot. They're very affordable. I think that this whole thing of highlighter is $14. And I actually love, love this pretty paint blush that they sent me too. So easy, right? So quick, really adds something. And I honestly feel like a powder highlighter is faster than a cream highlighter. Cream highlighter is awesome, but it can kind of disturb your look if you're not too careful. Like I have to put it on a sponge and like, you know, dab it very gingerly on my face. Whereas like that was like, you know, no problem at all. And even like the milk highlighter, I feel like I can put it on with a brush on top of a cream look. Like it doesn't complain. So, the other thing that I wanna do with the Aether highlighter is actually put this on my eyeballs because I feel like, you know, we laid this perfect foundation, right? That I would be happy to wear for the rest of the day. It's not going to crease or anything like that. If you're really self-conscious about it creasing, wipe any other product off of your eyelids before you put on the sky wash and it's going to like stick better. It might crease just because I already have like other product underneath it that's a little slippier, but uh, yeah, it, it is made to dry down. And I'm going to put this on that same brush and I'm just going to, I mean, really, not even strategically, just kind of put that all over, starting in the middle of the lid and a little bit right here. And I just feel like it, <laughs> it's not even a highlighter as much as it is, just like it makes things look kind of wet. It's a different texture. It breaks up all the different textures. I think that that's one of the keys to looking kind of put together is to have different textures kind of all marrying together. You don't want your whole face shiny or your whole face dry or your whole face matte or whatever. It's about things looking healthy and natural. And for me, a lot of times that means that like, you know, I enhance where the light's gonna hit with something that makes my skin look even dewier. Whereas like around underneath my eyes and like my mouth and stuff like that, I just kind of want to go a little more matte. When that reflects light, I feel self-conscious and stuff sticks to my face. And so finally, and I know, <laughs> Most mamas, probably myself, my future self included, are not going to have time for this, but I think that eyeliner 
makes the biggest difference on my face personally because my eyes are so small. <laughs> and so I will take just my little brush here and you know, the eyeshadow palette that I always have lying around anyway, the Thrive Cosmetics Perfect Eye Palette in Warm Neutrals. And I just dip it in this brown shade and I draw like the tiniest little line right here with a damp brush that I have licked that is not hygienic at all. But like I always say, I'm not licking your brush. <laughs> and especially with your mascara on, it's super easy to just like see what you're doing and like where you're laying it down and how much you really need. And the answer is not much. I hope that that's not misleading. I realize I didn't like pose for a thumbnail at five minutes. So I hope that nobody's like, um, what you ended up showing in your thumbnail was an eight minute phase khaki. We are not achieving time travel miracles here. So I apologize. I'll do better in the future. <laughs> but yeah, this is like what I would consider to be a completely wear all day face of makeup. I don't feel like I am missing out, skipping out, skimping out on anything. I feel like so pretty, just so pretty. Like my skin looks awesome. I'm gonna move you guys back out so that you can see the whole situation. I didn't bother to get all this volume so you could just see my whole, just my face the whole time. So this is the final look and you know, maybe you're not in a big hurry in the morning. One, oh my gosh, one girl commented. I love her comments. She said, I get anxious in the middle of the day and I take all my makeup off and then I decompress by putting more makeup on and I'm just like, Yes, girl, like that is self-care, like absolutely. So it doesn't have to be necessarily I'm in a time crunch in the morning because my baby's crying or I have to get my kids to school or you know, whatever. It can just be something that you're like, I want to feel a little bit better in the morning. I want to have a slight difference between when I wake up and when I feel like my day has begun because I'm at home all day and investing that little bit of time in yourself that just enhances the things that you love. I really encourage you guys when you're thinking about just paring down your makeup routine to first start by thinking about the parts of your face that you really, really love. It's not like, I think that we approach makeup too often thinking about things that we need to fix. And especially as women specifically, we have it ingrained in our brains all the time from like every, every corner of our existence to look for what needs to be done. And I think that a lot of times that translates to looking at what needs to be done on our faces. And that really like cannot coexist with looking in the mirror and seeing beauty and, and like loving exactly like loving your flaws. You know, you either criticize your flaws or love your flaws. You can't do both. And so for me, a lot of times, like making sure that when I'm looking in the mirror, I'm in the right mindset. And sometimes it takes like positive affirmations and things like that of just telling yourself that you're worthy and you're beautiful on a daily basis. And eventually you'll start to believe it. It might take you a little bit of time and wearing that makeup look that is a little bit of a less is more look for you to start recognize, re-recognizing yourself in the mirror. You know, I think that I got used to seeing myself with a full beat for so long, being a hairdresser and things like that, and just really wanting to like look dolled up every day that it took me a while to kind of pare back down and want to grow my hair out natural and stuff like that. Like, <sighs> This is all just my going down a trail of khaki's personal story here, but there is self-care in simplifying and there is definitely self-care in focusing on what you like about your face before you start doing your makeup. So that is what I hope to impart on my channel. That as well as like we discussed in the last video, makeup that looks good in real life. Sometimes I do things on my face and I'm like, that looks bizarre on camera. That looks really, really weird. And I'm like, mm, it looks fine in person that's what matters. It matters that it looks good in person. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this five minute face, five, eight minute face, you know, give you some options video. If you have some brands that you want me to do this for next, comment those down below. I would love to either try some new brands or dig back into my stash. I'm thinking Kosas, I'm thinking Ilya, I'm thinking Michelle Fawn. We'll have to figure out something to do with the complexion and things like that for certain lines that don't have complexion products, but we will figure it out. Maybe ColourPop, that could be really fun. Um, but yeah, let me know, guys. And if you did enjoy this, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for joining me today and for hanging out. I love you so much. I love you guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.